story appears ordinary until you see the core side of it. And what you're looking for is a story behind the news. We bring it to you from Lagos, the commercial capital of Nigeria. Giving you all sides and political stories round the clock. Every detail from the start line to the final whistle. Core TV News, expanding your view. Hello there, and thank you for joining us on Cool TV News at this hour. I am Nifemi Ogutoye. APC Presidential Convention is on holding, as we speak, at the Taslim Balogo Stadium in Lagos. Over 8,000 delegates at across the country are expected to vote in one of the five presidential aspirants, Mohamedou Buhari, Atiku Abubakar, Rabi Ukwankwazo, Rocha Zokorocha, and Sam Inda Isaiah for the 2015 elections. The convention is to be held amidst tight security following the anticipation of the arrival of delegates for the convention and the impending Lagos traffic. The Lagos State Commissioner of Transport, Coyote Opaifa, has issued a statement restricting vehicular movements and partial closure of roads linking the Taslim Balogo Stadium. As usual, our correspondents are on the field to monitor the convention. We shall bring you live updates as they unfold. And ahead of the 2015, the, the National Convention of the All Progressives Congress, the vice, former vice president and presidential aspirant of the APC has urged the party to ensure free, fair and credible presidential primaries. Atiku's charge to the APC is contained in a press statement issued by his media office in Lagos on Tuesday to welcome national delegates to the elective convention in Lagos. He stressed that the choice the delegates will make today at the national convention will set the country on the path of enthroning the much needed change for social economic and political progress and development. The former vice president charged delegates to be guided by the fact that for the past 16 years, the people of Nigeria have been forced to live under the most oppressive and despicable system of governors. Atiku called on them to pitch their attempts with him in the quest to begin the task of pulling the country back from the brink. Midbar stakeholders, elders, party executive and aspirants of the People's Democratic Party have rejected the Adamawa primary election held in Abuja, citing a breach of party guidelines and the electoral law as reasons. At a press conference in Yola, the state PDP governorship, Senate and House of Representatives aspirants condemned and reject what they described as acts of illegality happening within the party stating that the party guideline and electoral act state that a seven-day notice be given to the party and aspirants before changing the venue of elections and that all elections be held in the various constituencies. They also added that all the delegates and aspirants were in Yoda and have not been communicated by either INEC or the party. They called for the cancellation of the primary election held by the National Working Committee in Abuja. The party executive and aspirants in the state also resolved to abstain from the national convention of the party taking place today in Abuja. The People's Democratic Party, however, says it will allow its candidate to participate in the presidential debate if some conditions are met. National Publicity Secretary of the party, Olisa Metu, made this disclosure while speaking to journalists on the plans for the party's convention, which holds on Thursday at the Eagle Square in Abuja. He says the president, good luck, Jonathan, will be ready to debate with any presidential candidate as long as such a debate is issue-based. He said that President Goodluck Jonathan would be ready at any time to do so, while also disclosing that his party is sure that the president will win in 2015. He maintained that the duo of Mohamedou Buhari 
and Atiku Abubakar would not be able to win the election on the platform of the All Progressives Congress, describing the president as a good product with impeccable character. Still with the presidency, it has dismissed claims by some members of the opposition that the government plans to use war against insurgents as an excuse to postpone the 2015 election. Special Assistant of the President and Public Affairs, Don Yokupe, says his principal is busy working for peace in the country and would not want anything to disrupt next year's election. He was speaking at the fourth annual public lecture and award ceremony of Pilot Newspaper in Abuja. Yesterday on Twitter, another politician said that President Goodluck Jonathan is planning a war so that the election can be postponed. It is quite idiotic. <laughs> a man that is waiting to be crowned. Forget that it is Dunyo Kupe that is speaking. This is Africa. This is Nigeria. This is a president that has run, I mean, that has been in office for four years. To the glory of God, he has been able to make some substantial performance, unarguably. So every indication points out to the likelihood of his winning. Why will he now want to stop the election that his, his likely opponent has no record of winning anything? Kano State Governor Rabiu Kwankwazo has boosted his political war chest with about 2 billion naira at the phone razor in Abuja. The presidential aspirant on the platform of the APC also used the opportunity to take a pot shot at President Goodluck Jonathan, whom he accused of being soft on corruption. He also accused the president of lacking the capacity to wage a successful war against insurgency. This country had the capacity to support African countries, to even remove them out of apartheid and many other serious international issues. But today we have seen a situation where countries that were coming to beg for one thing or the other in this country, now we have to go to beg them to help us protect our lives and pro our own properties. I believe that this mess will certainly stop by the grace of God in 2015 when we have, when we have the right commander-in-chief of the armed forces. What we are lacking, in my opinion, is a commander-in-chief who has the capacity and the political will to stop what is happening today in this country. I want to assure you that as somebody who has been very conversant with the security of this country, I have no doubt in my mind that Rabi Musa Konkoso will be the right person to handle the security issues of this country. Mixed reactions continue to trail the initial postponement of the Oyo State People's Democratic Party Senatoria House of Representatives and House of Assembly primaries, which was uh, later held in the state. However, aspirants and party members have drawn different conclusions following the outcome of results at the different senatorial districts, constituencies, and local governments. Now, what are your laws at the battle to monitor the primary elections and fight in the support? The long wait for delegates before the commencement of the Oyo Central Senatorial District's primaries. Before the election started, these indigents of Oyo Town expressed concerns about the outcome of the primaries, saying it would be fair if the candidates emerged from their part, 
complaining of 16 years of being sidelined. It's our own turn now, people for your federal constituency to produce a credit plan here, uh, to produce a senator, Benga, or of it. Enough is enough. Marginalization on your is okay. Presently now, we want it in a or your state, in a, or your town. Only 70 statutory delegates were accredited from the 11 local governments in the district to elect the party's senatorial candidates come 2015. However, at result time, the incumbent senator, Ayo Adishio, got the nod ahead of the aspirants when he marched winner. Adishio, Adishio, Adishio. Ayaba declare Senator Ayo. Adesio, who put 52 votes, has duly declared the winner of the court. Responding to allegations on lateness and signifying his interest to run for the senatorial seat and the issue of zoning, the candidate says the most important thing is to diligently serve the general interest of the people without any discrimination. The fact that somebody is from your mother's womb, does not necessarily mean he or she will minister unto you or doesn't mean he or she will help you if you need help. And I've tried to prove that. But there's no end in sight. We continue to do what we can to allay the fears of those who feel that, that unless somebody comes from their community, that person cannot represent them effectively. I want to represent everybody in my central district. Former Federal Minister Wale Oyelese got a single vote, while Benga Olaife, coming second with 16 votes, conceded defeat and says it will work with the candidate to ensure his party emerges victorious at the polls in 2015. Forget about what happened today. There are so if you don't get Senate uh, slot or senatorial slot, you get other things and you give the people of the community something. Even though it's representing our community, it's representing our senatorial district, we want something for our community that on this commonwealth, this is what uh, it's been given to Oyo. With similar election in Oyo Northeast and Oyo South Senatorial District, the party continues to promise that the right candidate will be presented for the elections. Omota Yualo, Core TV News, Ibado. The batched governorship primaries of the Quara People's Democratic party has continued to generate reactions. Now 12 out of the 13 aspirants addressed a joint press briefing where they accused the chairman, uh, the state party chairman, of scuttling the process by bringing in thick delegates in order to deliver Delhi Belgori as winner of the primaries. But the chairman Iola Oyedepo and Delhi Belgori have uh, said that the botched primaries is due to the conduct of the aspirants. Rashid Rashid monitored developments in Ilori and filed in the support. That was what ended what would have been the primaries to produce the gubernatorial candidate of the People's Democratic Party in Kwara State. The aftermath has been accusations and counter accusation. Twelve out of the thirteen aspirants blamed the party chairman for the botched primaries, but Ijiola Oyedepo was quick to drop the blame at the doorsteps of the aspirant. The number of delegates which was supposed to be, which was supposed to be 709, suddenly grew to over 1,500. We observed that over 700 people arrived in the several buses escorted by the police with very delegates and the Many of them also decided, I mean, they also made their own accreditation tag. And therefore, so many people also entered the hall. And that was responsible for my cancellation of that election eventually. If we had conducted that election yesterday, there would be bloodbath. The aspirants stressed further that the election, if not for their vigilance, is schemed to favor Dele Belgore, even as Belgore fires back with the forum boasting that the era of imposition is over. The process began with several attempts to undermine it and then subvert rules to pave way for rigging. The primaries in favor of Dele Belgore. Some aspirants, the so called 11 aspirants, ganging up against me. One individual, you have 12 aspirants uh, ganging up. The people of Quara are no fools. 
they know who their friend is and they know who their enemies are. We're not buying all the stories of uh, Abuja's president. In the business of electing a candidate which turned to battle royale, the forum orders for a fresh election. For instance, the leadership of our party, to as a matter of urgency, order fresh elections between 10th and 11th of December 2020. I'm going to Abuja. We will take another step that we ensure that within maybe four or five days, we will have a candidate. The end to this beacon may not be in sight, for old wounds still seem very fresh, and the next election would better be hoped not to be like this. Rashid Rashid, or TV News, in Lorry. This is Court TV News on the hour, live from Lagos. We'll take a break now, and I'll be back with more stories. Don't go away. Every day, every hour, and every minute, news break in Nigeria. Things happen so fast, it's most times difficult to track and comprehend them. But that's what we do right here on DJ360. 2015, would you want to come back again? It's like asking Jesus Christ if he knew he was going to die, would he, come, would he want to come back as the savior of the world again? We do not just help you track the stories, we break them down. Explore all the angles, analyze the issues so that you can fully comprehend the stories and use them to make the right decisions. Welcome back. You can get all of our top stories on any of our social media platforms. On Facebook, it's facebook.com forward slash TV News. Our Twitter handle is at TV News Angie. We're also streaming live on YouTube at youtube.com forward slash core TV, live a space and news. As Nigeria joins the rest of the world to observe International Anti-Corruption Day, the United Nations says about $2.6 trillion is stolen worldwide through corruption annually. The UN also revealed that a yearly estimate of $1 trillion is paid in bribes across the world. These statistics were presented at a one-day forum in Abuja tagged against corruption today, break the corruption chain. It's against this backdrop that the global body wants all nations to ratify and implement Let the us UN Convention of against that corruption. It is only Nigeria. Every country, region or field of endeavor experiences corruption and cannot escape the pull of this crime. Corruption drives up prices. It leads to inflation. It erodes business credibility, it diverts public funds and undermines equity and fairness across societies. For a long time, our country, Nigeria, has been saddled with the scourge of corruption. While we must acknowledge, however, that we have not been idle in our bid to combat corruption and, other, and that our efforts through an array of anti-corruption legislations, institutions and measures must have accounted for an improvement in our rating in the recently released Transparency International Corruption Perception Index. The fact that corruption continues to remain a hydra-headed problem in Nigeria shows that we need to do more than just passing laws and creating further institutions. We must therefore improve and go beyond our current efforts by taking some bold steps. The Lagos State Governor Babatunde Fashala has described a situation where reference to the country's population figure is obtained from the United Nations. Fashala made the statement at the official unveiling of the Lagos State Permanent Resident Card. Abel Oluwale completes the story as presented from our studios. The Lagos State Resident Registration is an exercise aimed at collating data of inhabitants of Nigeria's commercial hub. After unveiling the card, Fashola says the initiative is aimed at ensuring proper infrastructural planning for residents. He admitted that if such process is adopted by the federal government, it will assist in unraveling the mystery behind getting the actual population figure of Nigeria. Ask yourselves, what is the information of Nigeria? Who knows? I'm sure if anybody offers a figure today, we will start a debate here that will not end. Now, should anybody therefore be surprised 
that we are having this kind of challenges that we live with today. I feel personally embarrassed every time we get figures from outside our country telling us how many people we are, telling us how many children are out of school. The State Commissioner for Science and Technology, Adibi Mabadije, and the General Manager of Lastra, Yinka Fashola, are optimistic that the data planning exercise will accelerate the development of Lagos. I am confident to say that the task of administering a cosmopolitan and popular states such as Lagos has now been made a lot easier, and the benefits of our good governance will be more readily evident to all residents of Lagos with the availability of this Lazara data. 2.5 million residents have so far been registered since the commencement of the exercise in 2013. We'll take another break and I'll be back with top stories making headlines outside Nigeria. Don't go away. You can now watch Core TV News Live from anywhere in the world on our website, www.coretvnews.com. Click on Live TV on our website and watch us live. And welcome to Core TV Primetime News. To follow us on Twitter, click on Twitter icon on our website. And Facebook, click on the Facebook and YouTube to see all our previous news production. You can also watch us live on YouTube. Click Core TV, leave a space, then news. Core TV News, a 24-hour news station. The highly anticipated U.S. Senate report released on Tuesday has condemned the brutal interrogation methods used by the Bush-era CIA on al-Qaeda terror suspects. The reports declared the methods as ineffective and that it yielded lead to actionable intelligence. The Senate Intelligence Committee report says the Central Intelligence Agency also used questioning tactics that were brutal and far worse than they admitted and the agency used inaccurate claims to mislead the White House and Congress about the secret program's usefulness. There are those who will seize upon the report and say, see what the Americans did, and they will try to use it to justify evil actions or incite more violence. We can't prevent that. But history will judge us by our commitment to a just society governed by law and the willingness to face an ugly truth and say never again. That wraps it. They say on Cool TV News. Join us again at the top of the hour for more stars. I'm Nifemi Ogun Thanks for being there.